Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss topics of where the appeal is. And as of right now, there is nothing to report until June 16th, 2022, or there around. Prayerfully, hopefully, there'll be an extension, there'll be a new trial, there'll be a um, removal of the judge in some way she could have a heart if she knows this is not her specialty. Maybe she could provide it to another judge to oversee the case. Um, so please keep Dr. Kelly in your meditation. Thank you so much. And remember, the gas card giveaway is coming up May 1st, and we have some rules and guidelines that must be followed in order to successfully receive the Cash App upload to your card. And here are the rules. We're going to give away three $25 cash app loads to you to enjoy however you see fit. You can buy something, uh, memorabilia of R. Kelly, or you can get gas, or you can buy yourself a nice little outfit or something for the house. But there's five things that you must do. The first thing, you must be a subscriber to the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel by May 1st, 2022. Once you've subscribed to the channel, watch three videos on that channel, um, archived or premiere. Number three, comment on each of the three videos regarding something relevant that you would like to add to it. Number four, you share the commented video to any community platform such as Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. That automatically puts you into the drawing for May 29th, 2022 at 6 p.m. right here on R. Kelly Uphill TV. We will announce the three winners live and they must be present in the live chat to accept the cash app load on that evening. Okay, the information will be in the description box below. This is a simple thank you for being so committed to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And this is our way of honoring each and every one of you. God bless our Kelly. Let me make sure that May 29th is a Sunday because everything I'm doing is going to be downloaded on Sunday. Yes. So the first is on a Sunday. I'll remind you again when we upload um, and then thereafter, we have three weeks to, you know, go ahead and do what we need to do in order to put ourselves into the winning. Um, now, let's get started with today's segment. I ran into my interviews. Someone gave me an interview, a very rare one, with Robert Sylvester Kelly about three years ago. And I want you to listen to what he was in the process of doing prior to the conspiracy situations getting stronger. Um, they were always out. The allegations were always out. However, they were really, you know, coming together at that given moment about three years ago. Um, <clears throat> you will be very, very proud of the way that he was looking to give back to his community, to his fans, and to those who supported. Skew, exactly. What advice would you give to young people coming up right now? What kind of inspirational advice did you could you provide? Well, first of all, keep God in your life first. That's first of all, first foremost. And uh, listen to your parents, you know, stay in school, stay away from the drugs, the violence, the gang banging and all of that stuff. And you too can be a performer, producer, a writer, slash basketball player, you know? Well, let me ask you this. How hard is it for you? Because in your songs, you make it seem like it's very hard for you to maintain this celebrity status. Is it is it that hard being you know, who you are? You know, uh, first of all, I'm a man, then I'm, I'm, I'm real. And everything else falls in place after that. You know, I just happen to be known through my music. But with my music, I, I try to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I think that's why I'm where I'm at. And as long as I continue to keep it real, I'll maintain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me ask both of you, what are you planning to do with this Life Goes On Foundation? 
Well, I'm gonna let her answer that. She okay. put it all together. Okay, right now you know? I'm trying to I'm trying to give back to children who are less fortunate. Cause I know how hard it was for me when I grew up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Trying to give them a better outlook on life and let them know their endeavors, whatever they want to do, they can accomplish those things. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do with this foundation to continue to launch not just here in Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit. Continue to see what we get together, entertain us, and continue to do something positive in the community. Yep. The other thing about it is we need to do it more. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, we starting it now, but we need to finish it with everybody doing it. All the celebrities right. who just paying attention to what what your music is and all of the fame and the hype. You know what I'm saying? There's kids out here that really need people like us to come together so they can see togetherness, so they can do it. You know what I'm saying? Tell me a little bit behind the uh, CD. Uh, well, the CD is just me, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a little bit about church, it's a little bit about partying, crying, happiness, joy, sad, you know, and pain, you know, and that's what we all endure in, in, in this world today, you know, and uh, I try to talk about it through my music and hope, hopefully each song would, would touch somebody in a certain way and make them want to change or remain the same. Okay, did you produce all the tracks? Yeah. You are, I think you are the next Stevie Wonder, myself. Wow. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm serious. I Thank appreciate you. it. This was a very impactful interview with Robert Sylvester Kelly and his um, interviewer. I, f I don't know her name. Um, however, the two of them were sharing in this interview that everyone in the music industry in celebrity status should be doing their part to support the youth within the urban communities. No one's coming to save the silent voices. And in order to be heard, it takes the whole entire community. These two individuals, Robert Sylvester and his person, was also saying that the voices of our children are not being heard. Also, because um, we have to, we're the ones we're waiting on. We have to get out, get active, support our community, youth projects, and really, really be a part of their lives. Now, if Robert Sylvester Kelly or R. Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly, if he was trying to do something underhanded, you know, because I know we have our hate naysayers right now listening like, uh-huh, that probably was a way to get in to do his dirt. Well, if he was doing that, he would not have included everybody, every single celebrity to be a part of this consortium. He was not just making it a R. Kelly thing. He was making it a conglomeracy. And I believe that that's the reason why all of the allegations started to come around him at that time because he was on the verge of leveraging maybe his past were not was not all that great but he was leveraging to make the balanced fulcrum equal just like he said climbing to the mountaintop he's not trying to run up that hill he's not trying to run up the mountain what he's trying to do is balance himself and that's how he was choosing to get back from all the things that he had done in his past possibly and he was also becoming, you know, just basically independent. So now the second conversation was from nine years prior. He was still dealing with allegations and the haters and the naysayers and all that. And yet still working within his life purpose for us to remember him in such a time as this. Let's take a listen. Hey, thanks guys. We're hanging out here with the man, R. Kelly, who I have to say is wearing the coolest jacket I've ever seen in my oh, entire wow. life. Thank Can you. we do the trick? Oh, of course. Well, all you have to do is really basically just tell me to light it up. <laughs> all right, let's light it up. All right, let's go. Yes! That is the coolest jacket ever. What is it? What, a single? It says single here, and it says VIME on the back. That is... Amazing. VIP -me means VIP wherever I be, just so you know. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to start saying that. It's a movement, baby. I love, when he walked in, he told me to snap, and then he was uh, lighting the coat up, and I thought that I was triggering it. I'm an idiot. You did it. Um, good. You are like the face of R&B music. Well, uh, how do you continually push yourself to keep coming up with with material that is that is, you know, like 
new and, and exciting? Well, I just ride off of my fans. You know, when, I, when I'm out in the streets, I, play, I pay a lot of attention to people. I'm always out in the go, so I'm listening to people and what they're saying. The fans are saying to me whether I'm in the mall or just going to a McDonald's or somewhere or whatever. But I listen to them. And I ride off of them, you know, and that inspires me to go into the studio. Also, on a show like tonight I'm doing, I'm on this tour, so a single ladies tour, and it, it allows me to see what works with the fans, what doesn't work with the fans, which hopefully, and so far everything's been working. I go in the studio with that, and I write from that is inspiration, and then that goes right back out onto the radio, and, and, and it helps me to stay current. Absolutely. Everything you do is very innovative. Thank so you. can you tell me a little bit about your newest album, Write Me Back? Well, Write Me Back, my newest album, is, a, is an album about love. It's about romance. And I, like I tell everybody, make no mistake about it, R. Kelly is not in one lane. I don't ever yeah. want to be remembered as being in one lane. As a matter of fact, if I'm in one lane, I probably won't be remembered at all. You know, who will be? So I try to switch lanes, you know. So this was one of those things where I had a Christmas party at my house. I invited all my friends, all uh, 1,000 of them, to, <laughs> to my house. And I did a Sam Cooke show. And it was an old school show. You know how you do an old school party. So ladies was walking around with the long stem cigarettes and, <gasps> and the whole fancy dresses and everything. The guys were in tuxes. And I did a whole Sam Cooke as if I were at the... Uh, Copacabana and it worked and it, it and it went over so well that I said you know what I'm gonna go in the studio and make me an old school song I, like I went in the studio and the first thing I heard was when a woman loves and when I did when a woman loves that felt good to me it felt like a Jackie Wilson Sam Cooke type of song so I said I'm gonna finish this song up and when I did it felt so good the company loved it everybody loved it they said oh this song is gonna be one of those wow. so I said well I'm gonna go in and do a whole album called Love Letter and so that's how Love Letter and the whole Write Me Back album. And once I did the Love Letter, I said, wow, I got to do another one because this was successful. It was platinum. And I said, wow, you can't have a letter, send a letter out without getting one back. So I said, I'm going to call this one Write Me Back album. I love it. So I went in and did a Write Me Back album that made sense to me and got that out there. So, and it worked. Definitely. I love that whole vibe. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about this tour, the Single Ladies Tour. Yeah, yeah. Your, your shows are anything but boring. Like, you do you. really cool things and, like, yeah. think outside the box. Exactly. So what can fans expect for this particular tour? Well, you know, first of all, the Single Ladies Tour came from, of course, um, feeling single off the album. It went number one. I felt good about that. And it went number one at a time that I was trying to put together a tour. Mm -hmm. So I said, what am I going to call the tour? I said, I'm going to call this tour uh, single, single Ladies. Because I felt like if I get the single ladies out, I'm going to get all of the guys to come. Of course. Because they're going to know it's going to be a bunch of <laughs> single ladies there to see R. Kelly. But R. Kelly's not going to be to see all those ladies, so we'll take them off his hands. So, <laughs> right. you know, I'm thinking like Good that, man. out of the box, right? So, <laughs> and it came out, and uh, it's, it's just working, man. And, and I can't tell you everything to expect, but you're going to hear a lot of the old school R. Kelly's from the 12 play to the ignition to, the, uh, you know, bump and grinds and all of that stuff. You'll so hear that. Good. And then you're going to get a douse of uh, the the uh, love letter and happy people and and uh, write me back all mixed into one great well you had throat surgery like a year and a half ago not long yeah. ago right how's mm -hmm. the voice doing i'm 98 percent now but yeah. i'm feeling good you know well, it sounded great when really you just good. sang 98 yeah, 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 yeah it's amazing man compared to where i was i wasn't able to talk for about two or three weeks you know a lot yeah. of ice cream you know well, that's fun that was a good part that was yeah i love ice cream so that worked for me for a minute but i was very scared at first when i my voice went out i was hitting a high note on when a woman love when a woman love and i have to hold that note after doing like a hundred songs on stage that's oh like gosh. the last song and one night it's just something popped and i was i ended up in the hospital surgery and all of that had a cess on my throat on my lungs and um I was out of there for about three weeks, you know. But then I bounced back like round ball. It's all good. We right. Back, baby. Well, we're glad you're back yeah. because that would be such a waste if yeah. we lost this beautiful voice. Absolutely. It's from all right, I've got to ask you about the Trapped in the Closet videos because I am obsessed. I think that they are genius. They're so creative and fun and cool. And you're coming out with more chapters. Yeah. So what can we expect? Well... As, as usual, you know, Trapped in the Closet is up to its 
old tricks again. You know, it's, it's you expect the unexpected when it comes to trapped in the closet. Because of the cliffhangers, you know, I can't give everything away. Right. But I tell you this, there are other new characters now, oh. along with the characters that were there, like Rosie and Randolph. Big uh, Man. Big Man and, and Bridget and uh, Twan Sylvester, uh, Rufus and Chuck and Kathy and uh-huh. all of these characters, man. And it's going to be some very exciting things going on. I honestly didn't think I could do it because mm-hmm. uh, Trapped in the Closet is such an alien. You don't really know when it's going to visit again, you know. So, right. And I got these investors. Everybody came to, like, they wanted to invest in this. They wanted to get it out here. And we got it out there. I got it in the studio. And as soon as I put up, do, 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 do. As soon as I put that up in the studio, I started hearing the rest of the story and mm-hmm. the package and all of that. And it's, it's so exciting. I'm, I'm so excited to, for you guys to hear it so I can go, I told you. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? <laughs> it has such a cool following. I mean, did you uh, expect it to take off in the way that it did? Absolutely not. When I first wrote Trapped in the Closet, the first chapter, I was just writing a song. Mm-hmm. I was writing a song. And then when I got to the end of it, I showed my company. It was like, but where's the hook? <laughs> it's just a story. Oh, it's and it ends. Well, where's the hook? I was like, I think this is the hook. Yeah. I, I, you know, but then what happens? It, it leads you to nothing. But what happens after that? So I went in and wrote another chapter. After that, I started writing chapters and chapters. Next thing you know, it's six chapters out on the radio, messing up the format because everybody want to know what's going to happen next. It was almost like it was just exciting to, to see that happen, man. It's so and good. now it's, I got a leash on it. I can write it at any time. I got 70 chapters waiting to put out in the studio right now. Well, you have had an amazing career, which we've talked about, and you've Thank literally you. worked with like everyone you could possibly collaborate with pretty yeah. much what have some of your favorite collaborations been wow um i would have to say the the, the game changer uh, first of all ronald isley uh, yeah. mr biggs you know from the isley brothers you know when i came to him with download that really set me and him into a whole nother thing because it changed the way people do videos now everybody want to do movies and their videos a lot of stuff it changed the game so download was a very big move for me man and then ronald Isley, i, I thank him for coming in along on that and, and assisting me in doing that but michael jackson of course when i did uh you know who didn't want to work with michael jackson i mean you know seriously when when i showed michael jackson you were not alone and he i came in the studio and he was like Oh my God, you sound just like me on the demo. Oh my God, I think we ought to leave your focus there. And then you played That's it such there. a good Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Amazing. <laughs> and um, that was exciting, man. That was just, I was one of the most nervous guys in the world when Michael stepped in my studio, and it was like ridiculously crazy. You cannot beat that. Yeah. That's pretty you awesome. Cannot. Yeah, you cannot. Yeah. Well, thank you so <laughs> thank much, Arkelly. Really. I appreciate it. <laughs> So did you see how he was becoming independent? He was going out, doing his own thing, making his own interviews. And it was just an amazing time for him at that point. The high and low, the pivotal points of his life was all coming together. Now we're going to listen to what he was feeling back in 2020 when he was picked up on bogus child support claims. This is as real as it gets on the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. So let's listen to this right here. And I would love to get all of your views on it and thoughts. Here we go. See, this is what happens. When my back is against the ropes. I come out swinging. My flow, my style, my look They want my swag so bad I swear I should write a book Wake up every morning, check the glass for them snakes Call these nine millimeter flows my rate Bitches over money, no way I don't fall in love, they just fall in love with me Maybe it's the money, the cars or the clothes They got them backstage, yeah, all of my shows A legacy, yeah, I built it from the ground But crabs in the barrel, they stay trying to pull you down Acting ass niggas, I swear I should write a play How they smile in my face, that's why I say I'll take on all you do today Cause I'm not gonna let you get in my way See, there's one thing that I don't understand in the end. I won't be the last man standing. The last man standing. The last man 
I simply love that song. The last man standing to me is saying a lot of things. It's saying a lot of things. And what's your thoughts on what you think he meant by being the last man standing? He's always been the black sheep of the music industry. He's always been that that person that nobody really respected for all that he was worthy of having done in the industry. And he still showed him out, showed up and showed out on every single obstacle, every single obstacle. And I think he is the perfection of success because you never stop. And if you never stop, then you'll always be on top. And it's like being incarcerated right now, having a whole library inside of your mind, not being able to write it out. But if you continue to keep exercising the voice, continue to keep singing in your sleep, sometimes when you're in your cell and everybody is asleep and all of that, you can hum, you can whisper. That is moving the aura into your manifestation through bioenergetics, inner energetics it's inside of you anyway and no one can take it no one can take it so I believe the last man standing is a very powerful tool that he used right before you know all everything went down he's manifesting again he's saying I am going to be a success here and I need all my Kelly Nation fans supporters I need everyone to stay on that on that level with him because we have to do it together. We have to create the life that we need to have to get him out so he can continue to move on with his career. Um, <clears throat> he'll never be able to stop singing and he will never allow someone to take his voice from him. They'll never be able to mute him. 
So I'm going to go over some um, comments later, but I want to do one more song to get you tied into what was going on with him right before everything hit the fan. So let's listen to this last song and then we're going to get right into the comments. Here we go. How do I tell her that I'm going away? She's everything to me. There ain't nothing she won't do for me. And every man wants a girl like her. No price compares to what she's worth. Uh, she saved my life in so many ways. Cause when darkness comes, she's my break of day. And I know I'm blessed with what I got. Yeah. But still I can't seem to tie that knot with somebody help me How do I tell my girl That something came up and the plans has changed How do I, how do I tell my girl That I'm not gonna be able to make it, I'm going away Tell me how, how do I tell my girl That I'm sorry baby but I just can't Tell me how do I look her in her face And have the nerve to say That I'm not ready on that wedding day Now we have both been together Since our roaring high school days We don't walk through all kinds of stormy weather And we have both shared each other's pain No one could ever come between us two and I got my breath that things would never, ever change. Now this world of marriage we vow to, all of a sudden seems so strange. Somebody help me, yeah. How do I tell my girl? Something came up in the plans has changed. How do I tell her? How do I tell my girl? Yeah, that I'm not gonna be able to make it. I'm going away.
No one could ever come between us two And I bite my breath that things would never ever change Now this world of marriage we vow to All of a sudden seems so strange Somebody help me yeah. How do I tell my girl how to find Something came up in the plans has to change How do I tell her How do I tell my girl The emotion behind the man, Robert Sylvester Kelly, is so phenomenal. And I think that's what drives his music to be as passionate and compassionate as possible. So, as promised, let's get into some of the comments. Okay, now, a year ago, Marty says, I'm never going to stop listening to Kells. I agree with you. I'm not either. <laughs> this is why I say they cannot deny him his credits. They cannot deny him the fact that he is the king of R&B. Lakeitha says, R. Kelly is so gifted and talented. I love all his music. Regardless of what he did, you just can't take that voice away. I never stop being a fan. Miss Booker, as an artist, can't nobody step to his level. His delivery is priceless. I love all of the Kale's music. Hell, I had two kids from his music. I can separate this is his job. And he's amazing. He's an amazing artist. Period. Personal shit is a different conversation, but his music is and always will be timeless. I'm not here to judge. I'm here for the music all day. He still brings the fire. Can't ever take it from him. It is his gift and his blessing, music. What they're saying in those videos, who is with sin should cast the first stone. Who is without sin should cast the first stone. I think that's what he meant. Definitely the goat. <laughs> you know, so what are your views on that song? You know, to me, it seemed like he was getting his mind prepared for where he is now, because everything we do subconsciously, we do it. They say it in psychology all the time. We always pave the way for what manifests in our lives. So that's just like premeditation. You know, it's like premeditated. You knew 
that it was going to happen. You knew it was going to go down. And so this is how he chose to handle it. He was going through a lot emotionally. He's a very emotional being. And um, a year ago, someone wrote, thank you, R. Kelly, for continuing to do what you do best. It's a win-win. You can't hurt young girls and you can still make exceptional music. I wish you the best. So they're saying that you have to make a decision um, to hurt any woman emotionally, no matter the age, no matter the circumstance or the situation um, is determined by the emotional standing and state of the woman. Um, You know, especially if you have women who are in it to control, manipulate, deceive, you know, all those, those areas, that's very important. So, you know, again, um, I'm just having a good time right now, you know, looking at the past and looking at the things that, you know, made R. Kelly who he is to everyone who's listening right now. So I thank you. Shaquille said, forever will support this man through my lifetime. Kel's music is priceless regardless of what he's done. This man is talented. No artist is on his level. Hopefully you'll be free soon. You know, so we're talking um, about his music and about, you know, how much he's loved. I love you, R. Kelly. The minute I heard this song, it brought me to tears. My heart and soul screams out for you. He is not convicted of any. Well, at this point, he wasn't convicted of any crimes. Prosecutors and judges get out your personal feelings. So, yes. So that's what I have to say on that. Um, on those comments, I, I, I just really wish that the best for this wonderful spirit. And I hope that, again, Joanne Kelly is aiding and abetting the ancestors to come and bring support and compassion and love to the planet so that we can heal all together because everyone is in a trial error state right now it's like even his fans and supporters are incarcerated mentally with him because we have been reduced to not being able to hear what he has to present to the world and the gifts the babies that he is impregnated by. He said um, to someone the other uh, month or the last time that I was watching a interview, he says that he's having miscarriages and while incarcerated because there's no way that he can continue to create, you know, the beautiful music that the world needs to hear because of the convictions and because of the allegations and because of the smearing campaign of his name um and it's just I, I just hope he's more aware right now I hope he's more concerned on focus and genuinely maturity maturity as far as you know making sure that he knows who he's surrounded by so I thank you for liking commenting subscribing to this channel and viewing this podcast thank you for all your um heartfelt blessings of freeing R. Kelly. Um, we do have people watching this channel that are in decision-making positions um, in the courts and in, you know, uh, the criminal justice system, because that is where I stem from. So we will be promoting and linking. So if you have to go to the FBI website and and share some of these videos, please do that. If you have to go to the um, Bureau of um, Commissions or, you know, because the disproportionate minority confinement is another area that I feel that R. Kelly has been um, incarcerated upon as well. You know, how many African-Americans are make up the population to how many African-Americans are incarcerated in the criminal justice system. But that's a whole nother topic we'll talk about on another segment. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and as always, keep it 100, and we'll see you next time.